Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, so far the vote stands at 53 to 6, I think it was, or 9, or something like that. I don't know, I can't remember, but it was overwhelmingly in favour of us reviewing the Novridge SSG 10A something. So whether it's the 1 or the 2, it depends on what I've got in this box, and you'll have to wait and see. Now, I wanted to do this unboxing a little bit earlier, but thanks to uh, Parcel Force, it took a bit too long. It got from Austria to about 15 miles from my house in 48 hours and then took three days to reach the last 15 miles to get to my house. I'm sure there's a good reason for that. I'm sure that Parcel Force are using kittens to drag their lorries or something to save on their carbon footprint. Either way, it got here eventually. Unfortunately, it also looks like they used it to smash a few doors in because the box is absolutely wrecked. So we'll have to open it up and see how it is. Remember guys, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Remember to hit that little notification bell in the corner to get first signals of when we get a new video up. And please subscribe because it helps the videos, it helps the channel out and it keeps us going and keeps us giving you content. So we're gonna get on with this and we're gonna open up this box to see what's inside. Okay, so we're gonna open this box. Now I'm obviously doing this wrong. I'm gonna open this box before it falls apart to be honest, but in true airsoft fashion, I'm obviously doing this wrong because I'm going to use a little knife with my uh, with my multi tool. And obviously, when you do any kind of airsoft unboxing, you're supposed to use some kind of giant saber or sword or whatever it seems on everybody else's channels. But unfortunately, I haven't got one, so you're going to have to put it with the pen knife and my insane rambling. Right then. This box is absolutely battered. I dread to think what the case is going to look like. Okay, so. And here it is. And remarkably, I think the case. No, it's not in one piece. The case is broken. It is broken at the top and it is broken at the side as well. So well done, Royal Mail, you have destroyed it. That is absolutely, yep, that's dead. So great start, a broken case. That's just what I love. Now, other than that, it's all looking very nice. What a shame, oh well, never mind. But what we really care about is what's inside. So I'm gonna get you guys a little bit closer and we're gonna have a look at exactly what's in here. So here we are, and you can see straight away the big hole in the box. <laughs> Not happy about that, but we'll get over it. OCD overload. Now let's open this thingy up and I'll show you what's inside. Is it going to be the A1 or is it going to be the A2? Well, I know actually because I know what I've ordered. And there it is, it is the A2. And for some bizarre reason, the cocking handle was sticking out. <laughs> and that's also, ah. I do believe we've found the culprit of the hole in the box. The cocking handle was stuck out like that. Somebody has closed the box on it and it's scratched around the inside of here and smashed the box. So all in all, the packaging is not good. Right, so we have instruction manual. Pretty normal kind of thing to find with an airsoft gun with the man himself in there doing the advertising. And then we have the gun. Right then, so where are we gonna go with this? Let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that. Now, I'd be interested to know where these are packaged because I think if they're packaged in China and sent over, who knows how long that was smashing around in there against the inside of the box. We have an unjamming rod. We obviously have our case and we have the gun. So let's get this out and see what it's like. Okay, first impressions. Stock feels pretty nice. Finish on the barrel, a bit shiny if I'm honest. Um, but let's get rid of the box and have a proper look at this. I'm going to stick a scope on it because I cannot stand looking at a sniper rifle without a scope on it, it just looks wrong.
Right then guys, so here it is. Now first impressions is this thing is extremely light. So I've seen a couple of unboxing videos already because of the fact this got a little bit later. So I've already seen a few in America and uh, a couple in Germany. And a couple of reviews said that these are quite bulky, the A2, particularly the A1 is certainly not bulky. That's very, very lightweight. But a couple of people sort of said, oh yeah, the A2 is a bit more bulky, you know, a bit more tiring to carry around for the day. Right, let's just get one thing straight. This is not heavy, not in the slightest. So I've got my scales. I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna see exactly how heavy it is. So scales are zeroed, we're gonna put this on. There you go, this is 4.30 kilos. That is not heavy. And to give you a comparison, so we've got a benchmark to go with, we'll put my ASO2 on there, which is a very short rifle. That is 3.50. This gun is actually very light. So don't let anyone say that this thing's heavy or bulky because it is far from it. Also, the overall length is quite short in comparison to a lot of sniper rifles. So let's take a tape measure to it. So from the end of the barrel to the stock, and that's with two spaces on there, it is 1.7 meters. So that is really not very long. So in comparison again to something like the ASO 2, which is an incredibly short sniper rifle. Put it on there. The overall length of this is, with an extender on the stock is, what would it be? 935 millimeters, so just under a meter. Okay then, first things first. So, in its standard form out of the box, this gun is light. Even with a bipod and a great big scope fitted to it, it's still very light. It's not a burden at all. Now this is the A2 version, and it also comes in the A1, which I'm sure most of you have seen on Novridge's website. Now the literally the only difference with this compared to the A1 is the stock. So you get a different style stock, which is a, a maple leaf stock and you get a different bolt as well. Instead of the sort of the flat bolt, you get this big knurled bolt, which is quite nice. That is the only difference, there's nothing else. So if you get the A1, which is quite a lot cheaper than this, then you'll have exactly the same internals, just a different, different aesthetic if you like. So let's look at the aesthetics to start with out of the box. So we have this stock, it feels quite nice. Um, it's like a plastic polymer stock. It feels reasonable quality. Uh, we have this stainless steel cylinder, which I like, which is nice. It's often a, an upgrade piece. Uh, we have these QD sling mounts. We have those both sides. We have this twist um, sort of barrel that has become a little bit synonymous with, with Novridge, sort of his style. Uh, compared to the SSG24, it's a little bit on the thin side. Uh, it doesn't look quite as, as aggressive. One thing I'll say about the barrel, I don't like the paint finish. It's quite shiny and speckly. It's almost, I don't think it is metallic, but it almost has a metallic look about it. Um, I much prefer a straight matte black barrel. I think it looks far more uh, sort of a tactical look, if you like. Um, the bolt looks very good, looks nicely made. Uh, it's not too wobbly, um, so that's okay. We have this flat trigger, and we have quite a nice metal, is it metal? trigger guard I think it is yeah it's an aluminium trigger guard at least I think it is yeah it is you see cast marks on it that's quite nice underneath we have our magazine uh, there nice clear magazine so you can see how many BBs are in there we have our magazine release button there not particularly positive quite light but still okay and then we have our the base of our stock which is quite broad and flat it's quite nice so turning it over look at the other side and we have a repeat Again, we have the Novridge logo. We have our hop-up adjustment, just there. More QD sling mounts. And we have these rubber uh, grips, if you like. So these actually come off and they reveal underneath some M-lock mounting points for things like bipods or lasers or whatever you want to put on there. Um, not really, you don't really need a flashlight with a sniper rifle, but you know, if you really want, you can put one on there. Um, they are quite a tight fit, they take quite a bit of pressure to get back in, which I like because that means they're less likely to fall out. 
he says. And we have this nice flat trigger, which actually feels very smooth, very nice. Uh, we have an adjustable cheek piece on the stock. Again, a few marks on there, but not too bad. It's not, I've seen people say it's got a rubberized feel to it. It hasn't, it's plastic. <laughs> there is no rubberized feel to any of this. And anyone says there is, is full of rubbish because there isn't. There is to these grips here because they're rubber, but the rest of it has not got a rubberized grip. It is just a, um, a plastic with um, a bit of a gritty feel to it. So it give you that feel of, of grit rather than just being shiny plastic. So it's, it's not rubberized or anything like that. And it's not painted either, but all in all, it looks quite nice. Uh, like I say, I'm not a fan of the shiny barrel, but we can get over that. And back here, we have our safety. Okay, so the magazine fits underneath. It's not particularly tight, it tends to wobble, but as long as it works, it doesn't matter too much. And you just press this button to release it. So if we do that now, the magazine drops out. So no problem in getting the magazine out. There is the magazine. Uh, it looks like it'll feed all the BBs in as well. It's got a little extension on the follower. So that's good. So hopefully all the BBs will feed. And if we look inside the magazine chamber, we can actually see inside there, if it focuses, you can actually see the nozzle, stainless nozzle, and the yellow telltale sign of a maple leaf hop. So that I believe is an Autobot auto booking in there. Okay, so first impressions out the box. It feels nice, it feels good, it feels solid. No rattles or wobbles. Um, the trigger guard's nice and thick, nice and wide, and it's very light. It does, does feel good, it feels good in the hands, and it's a nice wide front grip, I love that. And I like the big knurled grip on the back. I'd probably have a couple of additional extender pads on here, just for the length of my arms, but then I am bizarrely tall, so that does make a difference. But no, it feels really good, and it feels actually very well balanced. So the one thing about sniper rifles is, is sometimes it can be a bit front heavy or back heavy or whatever it is, depending on the type of sniper rifle you have. But this actually feels quite balanced and it's a nice length. It sort of tucks into your shoulder and it feels good. And I could actually, I actually think this is more stable in the shoulder than even my ASO2, which is very short. And that's quite a nice thing to find. It's not, it doesn't feel front heavy. It just sort of sits in the middle, and that's a, a really nice touch. So well done, there from Novridge. You've made a good job of that. So let's move on to the other bits, which is more the operation of it. So we have a safety here. It's not a particularly positive click, but it's okay. It's not wobbly. Nothing wrong with it. Um, and then we have our bolt. A little bit of movement in it. If we lift it up, you may notice it's got a 90 degree bolt. So with a normal sniper rifle, you lift it up, and it's usually up here somewhere, and you sort of pull it back with the, the scope. And the interference with this it is a 90 degree so you put it up and then you can pull it back please please when you cock a bolt action rifle don't hold the end here and cock it it just makes me feel sick and I hate seeing every time I see a YouTube video somebody doing that I feel sad and sorry for the rifle because it's not a nice thing to do to your gun every time you put it on the end you're putting pressure on the actual cylinder and it's not good you should always hold your thumb at the back of the bolt, as it would be if it was a real rifle, with your fingers over here and pull straight back. Don't pull to the side, always pull straight back. Now the first thing I can tell you is that was actually a smooth bolt pull. There's a little bit of movement in the cylinder, nothing terribly offensive. It's quite a long cylinder, but it feels good. And the safety's on. <laughs> wow, that is a short trigger pull. So let's try that again. 90 degree bolt up, pull it back, real smooth. Yeah, actually the, that's a nice smooth bolt pull. Back down on the trigger. Yeah, that is an instant trigger. That trigger is really nice. Now, it felt nice straight away when I pulled it before I cocked it. But when you fire it, that trigger is absolutely sublime compared to other sniper rifles I've used. It is instant. So let me show you that again. So if I put my finger on there, yeah, that is really nice. And it's actually pretty quiet as well. That is not a loud sniper rifle. So that's quite impressive so far. 
So the operation side of it feels really good. And I'm surprised I like the bolt pullers as well. It actually feels really good. It's a little bit, a little bit of noisy bolt pull, but it's not the worst by any means. Yeah, that feels good. So, so far so good. Now, I know everyone's gonna to wanna to see the air seal test. Not a problem, we can do that. And it should be pretty good from everything I've seen. Sounds like it. Yeah, no problems there. So we've got a good air seal on it as well, which is pretty important with a sniper rifle. Now, all things so far look pretty good, pretty impressive. So let's get a chrono. We'll put a few BBs in the mag and we'll see exactly what FPS we get. Okay, so we're using 0.2 gram BBs. 482. 490. 486 that's actually really consistent I'm impressed with that okay guys so first impressions out of the box and what do I think of this so it's got an absolutely buttery smooth bolt pull it is absolutely great I can honestly say that is one of the nicest I've used on an airsoft rifle this magazine's empty by the way um, safety I'm not so fussed about it, it works it's there you know it does its thing um, hop up obviously I haven't tried because we've not had it out yet but the consistency through the chrono was, was spot on and it's bang on the right power at 489 to, to 492 you can't complain of that really that's really really nice really consistent and it's a, a perfect power for UK limits the stocks a nice finish it's uh, it's well finished off it looks good but one thing i want to talk about with this rifle is that i've not really seen anyone else make uh, mention of in their their reviews that i've seen over the last week or so is this thing is basically a macmillan uh, tac 338 i think it is which was a custom rifle built for uh, chris kyle the american sniper and if you've seen the film american sniper which i'm sure most of you probably have this is based although not in name, certainly in looks, is very much based on that. So if you wanted a sniper loadout to sort of match uh, that sort of loadout with the Marines and the, with the um, Chris Kyle kind of style, then this is the perfect rifle for it because it is virtually a spitting image of it. And I'll put a picture to prove it. Um, and I think if you're gonna do that and you could paint it up in sort of a desert camo, it would look absolutely fantastic. And you'd also have a gun that works well and you get rid of that shiny barrel. Um, but that's not the end of the world. You know, you've got to take this for its component part. Is it a cheap sniper rifle? The A2 version? Not particularly, no. But we've got this, this thing, this, this phrase that's banded around, it's called, it's called pre-upgraded. Now, obviously, there's no such thing as pre-upgraded because it's either upgraded out of the box or it's not, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the pre-upgraded sort of doesn't work out. I know what they're trying to say, but yeah. It, it is what it is that comes out of the box. Now this is a VSR-10 base. Um, now everyone's quoting it as a VSR-10. I think it's got way more in common with a JG Bar 10, which is a clone of the Tokyo Marie. But that's not a bad thing because the JG Bar 10 is an excellent gun when you start working on it. And that is one of the crooks of this. I actually, at the moment, this works so well, it'd be a shame to take it apart to start to mess around with it or do any upgrades. Now. We've seen all these different things on Novridge's website about uh, machined hop units and things like that. It's, and I think there's some confusion over what's supposed to be machined. I was understanding um, from his website that anything that touched the actual hop rubber was machined rather than the actual unit itself. Um, the unit is cast. 
and the parts, the moving parts, that have any contribution to the flight path of the BB was the part that was supposed to be machined. Now, whether that's the case or not, I don't know. You know, I only, I've only seen what I've seen in other videos. I'm not taking this part to have a look. That all comes later. But so far, the operation of this gun and the look and the feel of it is actually extremely nice. And I love the fat, wide grip on the front. And it, it just feels really nice. Now, obviously, that's not exclusive to the Novridge gun. You can buy this stock from Maple Leaf. It is a Maple Leaf stock. Um, and you can buy a JG Bar 10 and fit it onto your stock. And you can buy similar parts to the that are in this and put it together as a package, but it's whether it's cost effective and whether you've got the skill to do it. And I think this is where some people miss it out on some of what Novridge is trying to do. And, you know, I wouldn't call myself a Novridge fanboy by any means. I've got two of his guns, this one and the SSX. And the SSX had its issues, but it had issues that every single Mark 23 has. You know, every single, the Tokyo Marie, sometimes, well, it does have issues and it needs upgrading to work well. And the STTI version has exactly the same problems as Norwich's. Maybe less to do with feed lips. He has addressed that, fair play to him. The guy's looking at, you know, market feedback, what people are saying, and he's putting improvements in place for it. One thing this has got is a very simple um, trigger box, very uh, minimal uh, amount of moving parts and mechanism. And you can really feel it. It's so smooth. That is one of the nicest triggers I've actually seen. So let's get some comparisons for a benchmark. So for me, my benchmark is my sniper rifle that I've got now. And that is my ASO2. And this thing has been upgraded to death. So like all of my guns, I upgrade them like crazy. Now, I haven't gone crazy with the, the cylinder and, and put a, a one of those Mancraft things in or the HPA or anything like that. I've kept it as a spring uh, cylinder, but I have put an upgraded stainless steel cylinder in there, army armor and top unit, I've done all kinds of shimming to make sure it's smooth, and you know, to make sure it's as good as I can possibly get it. It's got maple leaf, uh, crazy jet barrel, uh, bucking, it's got, you know, uh, omega nubs, it's got top dead center wheels, help change the hop up. This thing's made to work really well, and I love this sniper rifle. And I actually like the fact that it's got a proper magazine as well. So. That's the one thing with this. Obviously with the Macmillan, you had a magazine here. This is following the JG Bar 10, Tokyo Marie VSR 10 route and having it further up here along with the hop here. And that's absolutely fine, that, that's cool. But it's a comparison. And just to give you some idea, so if I use this, as you can see, we've got the bolt going way past 90 degrees. It is a solid feeling bolt. There's no wobbles or shakes on this but then I've done a lot of shimming on it to make sure it's like that. Then when it comes to pulling it, it's very smooth. It's also very short, but it's a lot harder to pull. And when you pull the trigger, it is a hell of a lot louder. It is tremendously loud. Now, if we take the end off and we'll do a, an air seal test just to prove that it is working well. It's a bit harder to do with the crazy jet because you have to really get over the end of the barrel. But, There you go. So still works, but this thing is loud. And what you've got to remember is there's a lot of stuff you have to do to this to get it to the state that it's in now. I had to machine my own barrel spacers because I didn't like the ones that were in there. So I made my own barrel spacers. I had to put a crazy jet in there, which is expense. The cylinder was about 90 pounds. Um, the hop unit in here is about 50 pounds, 60 pounds, something like that. It's not cheap to upgrade. So by the time you've paid 200 pounds, you start putting the upgrade parts in, suddenly the price starts going up, the extendable stock, that was a fair chunk of money, I can't actually remember, but you've invested money into this gun. And I think what Norwich is trying to do here is say, look guys, save yourself the trouble. I've got a bit of skill when it comes to messing with these things. I'm able to do some modifications to the trigger box, different triggers, change the cylinder, do some modifications, shimming out, making sure that the cylinder's straight with hot units, all these things, and it takes a while to do. It's not the kind of thing that you learn overnight because it takes a while to understand what you're doing. When I first put this together, this bound into the hot unit, things like that, you know, it, was a, it took some while to get it, get it right. And even there, the trigger's not anywhere as nice as this one. And that's the key with the Novridge gun. 
He's trying to get out there to market and say, you don't need to do all this. Buy it, take it out and use it and have fun with it. And that's that's the idea, I think. And I think he not really gets a lot of stick for, you know, whether his guns are really that good or whether they're really any innovation over the standard guns that you can buy. And if you want to go out and, and buy a JG Bar 10 for, what it be, between 89 and 120 pounds, something like that, and then put all the custom gear in it, put a Maple Leaf stock on, you're gonna have a gun that's possibly the same, or if not better than this. Simple as, as long as you have the skill to do it. If you don't wanna do that, there you go, buy this. And you can go out, you can be the airsoft sniper that you want to be, you can play the games that you want to play and you can get the results. Now I haven't done a shooting test on this because pitch. Sorry guys, this is currently tomorrow. I just want to interrupt this video uh, before it carries on to say that I couldn't really let go without shooting test. I wanted to get a few rounds out of it at least. So I've come back from work early today to catch the last fleeting glimpse of daylight uh, just to get a few shots in. It'll be fired at 22 meters as usual using Jeff's 0.45 gram BBs. And it's more to see what kind of grouping we get. It's not overall, you know, distance. Obviously, 20 meters isn't very far, but at least it gives us an idea of the kind of grouping you can expect from that distance. So, just hang still for a little bit. We're going to put the video up of the actual shots hitting the target, and then we'll come back to the gun and we'll talk about what happened. Right then guys, so that was the video of the actual shooting of the target. So I've got the target down here. Ah, oh, damn it, I haven't got your pen. <clears throat> so this is the target guys and that you were just looking at in the video. And just to give you some idea, the, the scope wasn't even close to being zeroed. I mean, it was so far off, I'm surprised it wasn't looking back at me. Um, so I was having to aim right down the bottom off the target to get the grouping. So, you know, to give you an idea, it's not set up perfectly ready for this, this test. So I was having to estimate a little bit as to where I was firing as I was aimed down here. I could see the BBs were traveling up here. And I know that because the first two times I fired, I aimed at the center and they came up here. So that's why. So that was the first grouping actually, which was off camera. <clears throat> now the general grouping for this then, we sort of had two groups, sort of round here and round here. And I'd probably take that as one group, to be honest, because I wasn't far out. And then we had one flyer here and I think we had one complete flyer, which went flying off off somewhere else but 22 meters that's actually not a bad grouping for something straight out the box now i was actually doing some setup work on my aso2 at the weekend and bearing in mind what i've done to that the grouping on that is similar if not a fractionally bigger than than this grouping i've got today and for a gun that's straight out of the box for me that's pretty impressive um you i wouldn't expect well to get any more than that you're doing really really well and it was quite windy as well today i mean we're suffering from storm whatever her name is at the moment so it's not exactly perfect conditions so all in all i actually think this is really really impressive it's actually surprised me how close the grouping is i wasn't very confident with the weather and the fact it's a brand new hop hops take time to bed in uh, you will see a big difference in your hop-up performance from the first few shots to the you know next 500 shots, if you like. <clears throat> Once you get past a certain amount, the hop really does straighten up a lot. So for, for straight out the box, I'm actually really, really impressed with that, even only at 20 metres or 22 metres. That's good. I mean, like I say, I was doing some work on my SO2, and it's similar performance, but there's a lot more money put into that gun. And... Um, yeah it, it's taken a lot of setting up so for this to be as good as it is standard i think that's that's pretty impressive um i would be very interested to see what a silverback is like um but unfortunately i haven't got access to one but never mind um it would be interesting for a comparison though to see what the three are like so you can sort of gauge price versus versus upgrades and straight out the box but that is so far fair play and average 
I'll give you that one. That's uh, pretty cool. It also fired really nicely again. So I thought that trigger is spot on. Just before I send you back to the guy from yesterday, um, we are throwing 0.45 BBs, Jeff's BBs, and also the hop wasn't adjusted. I didn't touch a hop at all, and it's currently only on halfway setting. And it was throwing the BBs quite merrily down there, so I think you could even use heavier BBs than that, maybe even up to 4.8, something like that, but uh, you'd need to get uh, a longer range to be able to test that properly to see how far they'd go. So that'll be the next test for it, is to go on a game day and actually give it a shot over a long distance. So without further ado, I'll hand you back to myself yesterday. So I'm really interested as to how this can form, because I've only seen good results so far out of the performance of these, and that says a lot about the base gun, about the VSR style unit, and I think that says a lot about it, and it's dressed up really well like this. You can get all the accessories, you can get shortened barrels, shortened inner barrels, um, you can buy bipods that fit in the M-lock on the side. You can get the swirly grooves in your cylinder if you want, uh, different uh, bolts, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but as a base platform as it is, I think it's really good. And I love the fact it's got QD slings mounts as well because it's such a pain mounting a sling to a sniper rifle sometimes to get it to hang right. So I really like that and it feels light but solid. So. All in all, first impressions out of the box are actually really good. Um, when you first get out of the box, you'll look at it without the scope and think, oh, okay, feels light, feels, feels a bit toy. But once you put it together, actually it starts making sense, starts coming together, and it feels good. And when you shoulder, and when you start to rack that bolt, and it feels so smooth. The only thing you've got to watch out is if you're using a cheap riser, you, your palm can catch that a little bit, which, you know, it's one of those things. It doesn't do it on there for some reason, but... Yeah, I'm here, just, just catch this as you come back. Probably because of the 90 degree bolt, ironically. So you've got this, this smaller movement, which makes it a little easier. Of course, if it was up here, you'd miss the, the cheat riser, but I can live with that. It does feel smooth though, feels nice. I'd probably have it a tiny bit stiffer um, on the guides, but you know, that's just me being very picky. The trigger is honestly one of the nicest bolt action triggers I've ever used. Uh, it's really good. It's better than some air, air rifle and shotgun triggers, which are a straight, you know, um, firing bolts. And it is absolutely feather light. It's so light. You'd literally not even think about it. Whereas the trigger on my ASO2 is actually quite heavy. So I think these two guns are fairly comparable in, in as far as cost is concerned. But this does feel very, very finished, if you like. So quite nicely polished off in the mechanism and the way it operates. But the truth will be in the actual performance of it. I've not seen anyone give it a bad rating for performance yet, but there's always a first. And you can, I can promise you that I will tell you the truth. Um, I won't, uh, won't butter it up or say it's great. If it's not, it will be 100% the truth, and I will compare the two guns together. But that will have to be for a different video, because if I filmed it now, you wouldn't see a lot, and neither would I. So another nice little touch we've got with this is when I was firing at this does come out the end and it does feed pretty much the last BB. I think the maximum you'll lose out here when you change the magazine is one BB and that's not bad at all. But the SO2, you lose half a, a bottle of BBs every time you take the mag out. So yeah, so far so good. I'm really looking forward to using this. I can't wait to get out and feel and try it out because I think it's gonna be a beast. Um, if it performs the way everyone's saying they're performing, then there's no worries there. So next up for this is gameplay. Uh, like I say, we're going to have to wait a little while, but stay tuned, that video will be coming soon. Uh, the hop-up adjustment, for anyone who wants to know, is on this side. It's a little slider uh, just along the edge of the gun there. And so far, so good. So other than the broken case, it's spot on. Really, really feels good. I'm really impressed with it. So when I first took it out of the box, I saw the shiny barrel, I was like... <sighs> Oh, I don't know, am I going to like this? I was a little bit not quite sure about it, if I'm honest. Um, it could have gone either way, but having put the scope on, I had a few BBs in just through the chrono, just trying out, feeling that trigger pull. So far, so good. So, fair play, Novridge, it's looking good. If it performs as well, we've got a winner. And I think it could be Big Bird recommended. So, guys, that is the SSG10 from Novridge. Um, JG bar 10 base, uh, different trigger box, uh, different well, adjusted hop. It's, it's still the same kind of hop, but 
a few, you know, fettles make it a little bit more accurate, supposedly. And uh, a maple leaf booking. Not sure what type of barrel it is, but it's a brass 601 type ball. And uh, a maple leaf stock. And so far, so good. I'm, I really like it. So we need to get it out now and try it. So remember, guys, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. Leave any comments. Ask me any questions you want about it. Just fire them at me and I'll let you know. I'll answer them as quickly as I can. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next part of the Novridge unboxing because we're going to be trying this thing out very soon. We may even be pitching it against my trusty old ASO2. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching.